My name is Martin Stahl, and I'm a scientist at Stem Cell Technologies. And what I was going to talk to you today was a little bit about my own Moran, um, various meandering career through academia and eventually ending up in industry, and a little bit of what my perceptions were along the way. So my science career started at the University of Ottawa, where I initially enrolled as a master's student and eventually transferred to PhD. So as an incoming graduate student, and I'm going to say I'm like probably 90% of graduate students, I had absolutely no idea what I wanted and I really had no opinions about anything. I just knew that I liked science. I really enjoyed my scientific courses in undergrad. I especially liked microbiology and I didn't want to become an MD. So that kind of left academia and graduate school. So I joined a small lab and with a young supervisor and he gave me a high degree of flexibility as far as what I wanted to do. And I set up a project and studied bacterial pathogenesis of the gut. Uh, when I graduated with my PhD there, I moved on to a postdoctoral fellowship at the University of British Columbia. So there I had um, in two separate um, fellowships. I initially one from the Canadian Institutes of Health Research. I was on that one for two years, and then another two years under the Michael Smith Foundation Fellowship. So both of those were um, largely subject to um, studying bacterial interactions with the gut. Um, so at this point in my career, so between the PhD and the early part of my postdoctoral fellowship, I was pretty much down the academia path. I had decided that I really liked it, I was really good at it, I had a couple of high impact papers to my name, um, everybody was saying, hey, you should go and become a professor, and I never questioned that. I'd say, I'm going to be a PI because that's what I want to do. Um, I saw other people going into industry, but at that point in time, I can't say I really even considered it as an option for myself. Uh, I kind of looked at what people did there and I thought, that's really rigid, that's not interesting. Uh, you're basically just developing a product. Um, the joke that a lot of people made was that this is the dark side. This is where you go and sell your soul just to make a little bit of extra money in your paycheck. So obviously I had a very negative impression of it at the time and I'd have to say that probably in academia a lot of people think the same way. Um, so about one to two years into my postdoctoral fellowship, I was attending a conference with my supervisor. His name was Bruce Balance. And featured at this conference was two speakers talking about this cutting edge new technology called organoids. And both of them were talking about intestinal organoids. And the idea behind these is that you isolate stem cells, in this case coming from the gut, and if you can basically replicate the growth factors that they need, you can actually replicate them to grow just like they would inside the regular intestine. So essentially what you can do is create this little miniature gut in a test tube. And this is something that you can experiment with. So during one of these talks, he leans over to me and says, we have to get this into our lab because a few years down the road, this is going to be the standard in the field. And if we don't have this, then nobody who has, doesn't have this is going to get funding. So a few months later, I had tracked down the one lab in Canada that was working with these organoids. I had gone over there and learned from them and brought the technique back to our own lab. And we became the second lab in Canada that was growing organoids. So just by chance, um, stem cell technology, which was based in the same city that I was in, um, they were also starting to play around with organoids. So we quickly set up a sort of informal collaboration with the team lead there. His name is Ryan Condor. And he was setting up a growth medium for intestinal organoids. So what we did was we just sort of beta tested um, the medium that they were uh, developing. We tested, he'd come over to the lab and we'd chit chat a little bit. Um, we sort of help, help each other troubleshoot. We'd just like talk about science. Um, and that was actually really kind of an interesting experience. So about that time, it was now about four years into my postdoc and my two fellowships um, were running out. So we decided to put in an application to MyTax. So this is a Canadian um, program that is meant to sort of bridge the difference in between academia and industry. Um, the idea behind it is that they take a trainee, so a postdoc or PhD student in an academic lab, uh, pair them up with an industry partner, so in this case, stem cell. Um, stem cell puts up half the salary, they put up the rest of it, and you end up working on a joint project that's going to be in between both of the institutes. So in my purpose, I was going to continue working on these intestinal organoids. So I worked with stem cell, uh, usually I spent my morning there. Um, I would work with cultures there, I'd help develop a product. And then at the end of the day, I would take that over to my academic lab at UBC 
Um, and then I'd start just taking that and applying it to my own research there. So it's really having one foot in both worlds at this point. And this was really kind of an interesting experience because at this point I'd never actually seen an industry lab. I had all these impressions, I had all of these ideas, but I'd never actually been to an industrial facility. So one of the things that first struck me was that like definitely there's a lot of misconceptions and a lot of ideas about how industry works. And I can actually see where some of these come from. Uh, so coming from academia, you sort of have the idea that you do your work, you put it into a publication, uh, you submit it, it gets reviewed, critiqued, then they send it back to you, maybe you do some revisions. But at the end of the day, you kind of put everything out there. Um, you might be secretive about it at first, but once you get that paper, your formulations are out there, your media is out there, your methods, your experiments, your results. Even a lot of publications now, they even ask for your raw results. Um, so really the idea, at least assume if it works as practiced, is in academia to be as open as possible so that other people can take your work, build on it, and replicate it. When I actually moved to the industry setting, so now I was actually working on product development, um, this is a little bit different. On one aspect of it, I was actually really impressed at their own sort of peer review. Everything was really rigorously tested. Everything was, you know, basically I'd say it's even more tested and reviewed and critiqued than you'd have getting it into a publication. But at the end of the day, everything is internal. So when we're actually like talking to customers, I gave a few graphs, I gave a few charts and pictures to our marketing department that got disseminated, but ultimately everything is internal. and our customers and scientists out there, they never really see it. Um, sometimes you share a few things if we're asked, but generally you don't see all of that data. So really what the scientist out there has to do is just trust that the academic, or trust that the company is actually, basically has to trust them. And as a scientist, like we're not really built to trust people. Like we test everything. We want to like actually prove things for ourselves. And you just have to kind of take their word for it that this stuff works. On the other hand, um, when I actually started working in both, uh, both facilities, the science wasn't actually all that different. We were still, at the end of the day, all scientists. So the people I all worked with were either technicians or PhD scientists. Uh, a lot of them had the same experience I did. And we were all just scientists trying to answer a scientific question. The only thing that's really different is what that question is. So again, in academia, you're really sort of, you have your research project that's probably funded through a grant, and you're trying to answer one single question. So you're trying to pull in all of these tools, all of these experiments, and trying to put them towards this one, answering this one question. So you go into a lot of depth, but you don't really care that much about like how rigorous any of those particular things are, as long as they kind of give you the answer that you want in the end, and you know that that answer is right. From the industry side, on the other hand, at least especially within uh, the type of research that we were doing at stem cell, it's really more of a broad approach, but a lot more rigorous approach. So you're trying to basically create a product that you don't necessarily need to go that much in detail into, but you need to make sure it works for everybody. So we're trying to create a platform that will work for cancer researchers, developmental biologists, pathogenesis. Basically, you want something that's gonna be tested through as many controls as you can figure out with, but you don't necessarily answer many questions about it. You just create something that works. So that was sort of my experience while I was there. So about three months ago, uh, my fellowship was starting to come to an end. And at this point, it's safe to say that actually my opinion of industry had changed substantially. Um, I actually enjoyed the science there. That actually was quite surprising. I thought I'd be bored out of my mind, but it was actually quite interesting. Um, by the end, I was even finding it more interesting than the actual academic research that I was doing. So I decided that I actually kind of wanted to stay. So I talked to my supervisor there. Um, he pushed the higher ups for a little bit and they actually created a position for me. So I was actually largely going to be just continuing the same research that I was doing before. I was just going to be developing new ways to grow organoids. I was going to try to make the products better and actually try to push the limits of what we can do and try to do some stuff that wasn't even actually in the literature that nobody had done before. The other aspect of what I was trying to do, and this is what I'm going to try to do in the years to come, is work more closely with a lot of the academic labs and try to draw on the long experience I had as both a PhD student and a postdoc and actually try to work jointly with as many labs as possible and try to actually you know, create a project along with the academic labs, something that's going to be more applied and try to figure out new ways 
to basically work with their scientific partners to basically create better science. So thank you.